Let's just be clear on one thing. Without Remus Lupin, the rest of the series does not happen. Happy Tuesday, Potterheads! Today we are talking about Chapter 17 of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and just how essential Remus Lupin is to the book. But before we jump into it, go ahead and pause to read the recap in the description below. And if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy that you're here. If you want to, feel free to subscribe and ring the notification bell. And if you need to, you can catch up on all of the seasons that I've done so far at that card in the top left right there. Now we all know, this isn't a new thing that J.K. Rowling is doing. Yeah. Almost every book in the series, the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher is not only temporary, but extremely important to the plot of the book. Quirrell is Voldemort's first vehicle for coming into the school. Without Quirrell, no Voldemort in the school. Lockhart ultimately ends up being Harry's way into the Chamber of Secrets without Lockhart, well, that one's not as necessary. And we're going to talk way more about Lupin in a second, so we'll skip him for now. But then you look at Barty Crouch Jr., super necessary for getting him to the end of the Triwizard Tournament. Umbridge forces the creation of Dumbledore's army. Snape has to not be teaching potions so that he doesn't notice Harry using his old book. And then in book seven, like, school doesn't even matter to the plot anymore, so it drops there. But I'm going to argue that of all of the new characters that get introduced, at least up until this point, and definitely among the professors, Remus Lupin is the most important by far. Let's dig into some facts chronologically. We're going to start by just looking at how losing Lupin would affect just this book. Okay, so pretty much from the very beginning, if Lupin isn't hired by Dumbledore, then he's not in that train compartment with Harry. Which means there's no one to tell the Dementor to f*** off when it's searching for Sirius Black. And, you know, maybe that Dementor would have just seen Harry as too much of a snack and would have just not been able to help himself. Maybe right there, Harry suffers the Dementor's kiss, his soul's gone, maybe even Voldy's Horcrux soul is gone. End of book series. But say Harry doesn't get kissed, and he still makes it back to school. If Lupin isn't teaching Defense Against the Dark Arts, it's probably a far less competent teacher who's doing it. And so this professor probably doesn't think to take advantage of a Bogart that's hiding in the staff room. No Bogart means no safe way to practice Dementor lessons. Well, and if we take that even further, no Lupin probably means that there's no professor who has the time or even the willingness to teach Harry the Patronus charm. If Harry doesn't know how to cast a Patronus, then Malfoy's prank at the Quidditch match later probably actually goes to plan, and Gryffindor loses is the House Cup. And if Gryffindor doesn't win the House Cup, who knows if Wood would ever go on to become a member of the English Quidditch team. If they don't win the Cup, they probably don't build that long-lasting camaraderie that brings the entire Quidditch team back during the Battle of Hogwarts. Yes, I know that one's a stretch. But also, if Harry never learns a Patronus, then who the hell is gonna save him at the lake? Bang, boom, right there. Harry gets the kiss, Sirius gets the kiss, Book series over. But then, does Harry even end up at the lake if Lupin isn't a part of the series? I mean, let's look at that for a minute, and please forgive me, guys, I'm bound to miss some details, so leave them down there in the comments below. As always, I'm not pretending to be perfect over here. So, say Harry still gets the map from the twins. He still sneaks into Hogsmeade the first and the second time. He still is seen by Malfoy, so he still almost gets in trouble with Snape. Snape still tries to confiscate the map, and as it happens in the book, Lupin confiscates the map from him instead and says, you've done something stupid, don't do it again. Lupin taking the map is how he's able to find series and realize that Peter is still alive and faked his own death. But if Lupin's not around, then the map probably ends up back in Filch's hands, or Snape keeps it, or Snape destroys it. If there's no Lupin to see that Peter is still alive, well then, I mean, that just opens up a whole f world of possibilities. So no Lupin means that when Ron gets dragged into the Shrieking Shack by Sirius, there's no one to come after them to help. Because Lupin wouldn't be there to see Sirius on the map, and so Snape wouldn't see Lupin going into the tree and follow after him to see what's going on. That's how it happens, right? That Snape sees Lupin going into the tree? I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. Anyway, if it's just the kids, Peter, and Sirius in the shack, what would even happen? Sirius still disarms them. Harry still attacks Sirius. Sirius still freaking chokes Harry. Hermione still kicks Sirius. And then they still have their wands turned on him. But without Lupin to come in and stop them? Harry straight up wants to murder the dude, but I seriously doubt that he could given that he's 13. Besides, Harry is already a Horcrux-ish type thing, so imagine how terrifying it would be if a Horcrux murdered someone. But even if Harry doesn't kill Sirius right there, they probably turn him over to the Dementors, right? Sirius gets kissed, presumably Peter still escapes by just being a rat that runs away, and Voldemort comes back probably easier. And that, in all honesty, is like the best case scenario without Lupin. Sirius is clearly willing to do what he needs to in order to kill Peter, so like, here's another way that that could have gone down. There's all the tussle as before, kids get their wands back, but Sirius, crafty as he is, turns back into a massive dog, 
kills Peter somehow, and escapes. Dementors get super angry, descend upon the school, find Harry first, because apparently they have Potter radar, kiss him, end of book series. I mean, really, the bulk of my long view analysis depends on Lupin teaching Harry how to cast a Patronus. And I forgot a detail from earlier. If Gryffindor never wins the House Cup, it's unlikely Harry ever has a memory strong enough to cast a Patronus. Oh, and here we go again. If he never gets some kind of reconciliation with Sirius, he also never has something strong enough to cast a Patronus. If I remember right, it's just the thought later on that he has that he is going to go live with Sirius that makes it possible for him to cast a full-bodied Patronus. Is that right? Someone do the research. I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. But let's just keep playing the speculations here. Say, even without Lupin, Sirius is able to convince the kids of his innocence and still reveals that Scabbers is Peter. They still leave the shack, but this time, since there's no werewolf to transform and screw things up, Peter doesn't escape. They take Peter and Sirius up to Dumbledore's office. Dumbledore is able to convince Fudge. Peter goes to Azkaban. Sirius is a free man. And Buckbeak dies. So... That sucks. But if Peter gets put away, I've made this argument just a few weeks ago, Voldemort's return is seriously delayed. Especially without the return of his wand, which Peter himself rescued. So without Peter, no Voldy's return, end of the interesting stuff, end of book series. But that time, because like, she wouldn't have had a good story to tell anymore, so we would have stopped buying the books, not because Harry died. So yeah, I'm sure we all knew this like, instinctually, but Remus Lupin is the single most important defense against the dark arts teacher that Harry ever had. Even more than when he kind of became his own teacher in Dumbledore's arm. So let's sum up what might happen without Lupin. No Patronus lessons, Peter either dies or is discovered, Sirius is either exonerated or gets guilty for real, and Buckbeak dies. And quite possibly, Harry Potter gets his soul sucked out of his body. Okay guys, that's all for our main topic today. I've got a few other things that I want to talk about that I couldn't quite flesh out into full topic. First and foremost, like, Sirius Black is confusing when it comes to what he would and would not do in order to kill Peter Pettigrew. Because like, the first thing he does when he comes after the trio is jump right at Harry's chest and knock him over. And sure, I know he did that to make sure Harry didn't cast a spell at him because his wand was pointed at him, but still. And then later when Harry starts trying to kick Sirius's ass, he literally starts choking Harry. Like, how far would Sirius have gone to kill Peter? Like, would he kill Harry? I mean, he's been waiting for it for a long time. Wait, how long has it been? Twelve years! What was that? Twelve years! One more time? Twelve years! He's a little angry after all that time in prison. And you know what, guys? It's been a few weeks since I picked a comment of the week, so I'm gonna bring it back. And you know what, guys? This week's comment of the week actually goes to multiple people who reminded me that Crookshanks steals the list of passwords from Neville's bedside table, so... My bad for forgetting that detail, and thank you to everyone that pointed that out to me. And that's going to be all for us this week, you guys. If you like this week's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and you want to follow along, you can subscribe, and make sure you ring the notification bell so that you always know when I upload. And if you really love being a part of this community, I do have merchandise linked in the description below, and you can visit my Patreon right here. Here are some other videos that I think you might like if you enjoyed this one. Your assignment for next week is to read Chapter 18, that's Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Proms. Holy sh**! Did you ever notice that they're in order of how long that they live? So make sure you read that by next Tuesday, and until then, happy reading! Nox.